Good morning, and thank you all for joining us for worship on this important day of Palm Sunday, when we celebrate Jesus Christ as our King, as the one who shows us what real uh, kingdom looks like, a kingdom of love uh, where all are respected and cared for. Um, as we share in this special service today, you'll notice that um, we've got a lot of volunteers helping out. Uh, we pre-recorded this service um, because we didn't know what the virus would be up to, and we wanted to get as many people involved as possible. Um, so a huge, huge thank you to all of our volunteers who helped to make this service possible. Um, I'm not going to list everybody here because I don't want to forget anybody, but our volunteer list is in the slides, in the announcements, and um, we'll share that again at the end of the service. So please take time uh, to thank the people who shared in this service for giving of their gifts um, and helping us to celebrate Jesus as our King. Um, a couple other announcements. Um, as we are pre-recording this service, we don't really know exactly what is going on uh, with the virus as regards our other Holy Week services of Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and then Easter Sunday. So please be checking your email. We'll also put out a call multiplier on the day of the services to try to keep everybody in the loop concerning um, being able to share in the services in person or not. Um, but no matter what happens, these services will be shared online. So you can um, watch them on Facebook and on YouTube. Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday will be shared at 
8.30 p.m. And then on Easter Sunday, the service will be shared at 9.15 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube. Um, so no matter what happens with being able to watch in person or not, you can always watch the service online. Um, other announcement concerning worship is that um, since lots of people are getting their vaccines and we feel like it's getting safer and safer to meet in person, we decided to start an in-person service that will be happening um, if our county level is yellow, orange, or red. So we will be having this service even if Stark County is red. Um, it's going to start on April 11th, and it will be in the community center where we can spread out best, and it will be at 11.30 a.m. Uh, we're trying out this midday time um, to see how we like it and how attendance is. Um, that service uh, does not need a reservation. So you do not need to make a reservation to attend. We will have communion. We're gonna share communion in the same way that we did over the summer, where it's all pre-prepared and packaged separately. So when you get to worship, there will be a table that will have little containers of juice, little containers of wine, and little containers of bread and gluten-free bread. So you can just pick up what you need and take it to your seat. Um, so again, no reservations needed. We will have communion. It will be a shorter service, about a half an hour. Um, and masks, as always, will be required. Um, so I hope to see many of you there for that service. I'm so excited to be able to see many of you in person. Um, so please join us on April 11th for that 1130 service in the community center. My last announcement for today is a big thank you to all of our members who shared in our many canvas mural for our Easter hymn. Um, thank you for giving of your gifts and sharing in that fun fellowship project together. Um, if you haven't brought your completed canvas back to church yet, please do. Um, because we want to put the whole thing together and see this hymn completed, um, see everybody's individual work become one whole community. Um, so again, thank you to all of our artists, um, and a special thank you to Candy for being a wonderful fellowship leader um, and taking the lead on that project. All right, I think that's all of my announcements. So if you would please join me now in a moment of silence that we might prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. According to St. John, glory to you, O Lord. Five days before the Passover, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand things these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done of him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you to all of our young families uh, for uh, coloring some palm branch coloring sheets and sharing in shouts of Hosanna 
um, that we might have our palm processional. So I hope you enjoy this video of our young families um, praising Jesus as our King with shouts of Hosanna. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna. Say hi. Good morning. Good morning. How should I? Say bye. Bye. Peace out. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Prayer of the day. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, keep us in the joyful possession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. Please share a sign of God's peace with one another. I invite you to take some time in the comments of the video to share the peace with each other.
And the peace of Christ be with you all as well. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult or spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord my God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll be reading from Psalms chapter 31, verses 9 through 16. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten, out of mind. I am useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd, fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading. Philippians chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, and he said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. So they went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said. So the bystanders allowed the disciples to take the colt. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and Jesus sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks in the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! 
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. On Palm Sunday, we cry out with shouts of Hosanna. But even as we cry out that word, I think that we forget just what that word means. Maybe we forget because it's just so much fun to wave our palm branches in the air, to smile and to laugh together. Perhaps we forget because we follow up our cries of Hosanna with a song like, All glory, laud, and honor. Perhaps we forget because we're just so tired of Lent that we want the celebration and the joy of Easter to come a week early. Whatever the reason, even as we cry out Hosanna, we forget that those cries of Hosanna are really cries of save us. We forget that underneath this fun parade, there is something stewing. That what Jesus is actually doing and riding in procession into Jerusalem is dangerous. And it will ultimately lead him to the cross. We forget that these cries of Hosanna are cries of save us. Because Jesus' people, they needed to be saved. They lived under the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire that was the most powerful, the strongest, the most violent empire in the known world. It was also the most efficient killing machine in the world. Rome ruled over all with an iron fist. Their power over others was a power of manipulation, of violence, of threats, of control. And that is what Jesus' people lived under. They lived in poverty and in oppression because Rome had power over them. And I think we forget about that because it's just really hard <laughs> for us as white Americans to understand what the Hebrew people, the Jewish people, Jesus' people, what their situation was like. Because it is just so far outside of our context. It's hard for us to understand what it was like to live in an occupied land. That's why I think that we, we forget that those centurions who pop up in stories with Jesus, those Roman soldiers, they're there to monitor the people. They are there to enforce Roman law. They are there to watch so that at the first sniff of rebellion, Rome can come in and maintain control through violence. We forget that the reason that Jesus has to be taken to Pilate is because those chief priests who want to get rid of Jesus, they are not allowed 
to execute him themselves. Rome has taken away their power to enforce their own law. Right? And so these, these priests have to take Jesus to Pilate because only Rome has the ability to execute him. They're not allowed to. They can't even enforce their own laws. We forget that the reason that Pilate is there in the first place is because it's Passover, which is the time when the Jewish people, Jesus' people, celebrate and remember that God delivered them out of oppression. Out of the power of Pharaoh, God delivered them. So if ever there was a time that Jesus' people were going to rebel against Rome, if ever there was a time that they were going to deliver themselves out of oppression, it's at Passover. Pilate is there with his army as a deterrent, as a very visible reminder that if the Jewish people start a rebellion, Rome will slaughter them all. Because it is so far outside of our context, I think we forget what it was like for Jesus' people to be occupied by Rome. Rome, who had power over everything that they did, who maintained that power through manipulation, through threats, through violence, through fear. And that is why Jesus was such a threat. Because Rome exemplified the power over others. And Jesus exemplified a very different type of power. His power came from being with people. Because that is the type of power that God has. It's a power that is with the people because God is the creator of the people. God's power is a power, an ability to act that nurtures. It's a power that lifts up the meek and the lowly, that brings in the people on the outskirts of society. It's a power that brings people together, that restores community, that nurtures, that forgives, that calls on us to be our best. It is a power that loves that is the power that Jesus exemplified in everything that he did. It was the power that was able to heal people. It was the power that ate dinner with tax collectors and sinners and prostitutes. It was the power that restored people into their communities. It was the power that was able to feed thousands with just a handful of resources. That power with people, it was the power that drew crowds in the thousands to hear Jesus speak. The power that Jesus had, that he exemplified, it was the power with people. And that power is far stronger than the power over others that Rome had. That power that Jesus had, it is a power that endures, that lasts forever. And that is why this small handful of chief priests felt so threatened by Jesus. And remember, as we go into Holy Week especially, it was not the people who wanted Jesus to die. No, it was this very small handful of leaders who wanted Jesus to die because, because they had bought in to the Roman system of power, the power over others. 
They had bought into that system. They bought into it because some of them benefited from it. They were able to line their own pockets because they helped to enforce Roman power. They felt like if they were on Rome's side, they had power over people too. But many of them bought into that Roman power system because they couldn't see anything else, because they were afraid. They simply could not envision, could not understand the kind of power that Jesus had, the power with people. They couldn't envision the kingdom of God that Jesus talked about, that Jesus created here on earth. They couldn't see it because the kingdom of Rome was all that they could see. That power over others was all that they could envision, and they were afraid. They could not grasp what Jesus was doing in this world. They couldn't understand how he was turning this world around because they bought into that Roman power system. And that is all that they could see. They were afraid. They were afraid that if Jesus turned this world around, the world that they knew would be gone. And they couldn't envision anything different from that. And so out of fear, out of a desire to grow their own power and wealth, this small group of leaders, they decided that Jesus had to die. My brothers, my sisters, my siblings, Jesus shows us a better way of life. A way of life that is far better than the power over, the power that threatens, manipulates, that hates, that causes violence and fear. Jesus showed us a power that was with the people, it was a power that brought people together, that lifted up the meek and the lowly, it was a power that nurtured, that forgave, that loved, that healed, that turned the world around. No matter how much small groups of people who are very afraid try to crucify the kind of power that Jesus showed us, that power can never be crucified that power will always live because it is the power of God. Amen.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. Please join with me in the prayers of the people. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility, redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world. In all nations, instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their powers, but maintain justice. Sustain soldiers and guide those who command them, that they serve those in greatest need. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer. Grant respite and renewal. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You called followers to tend Jesus' body in death sustain hospice workers and funeral directors. Bless this congregation's ministry at times of death. Those who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, all who offer support in grief. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You are now invited to share your prayer requests in the comments. You, are in, you inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people in all places and times. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all of our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, we offer our prayers to you. We ask that you prepare our hearts and minds that we may be open to the ways that you answer prayer through us. Amen.
I want to take the, this opportunity to thank everybody for supporting the Pershaw Ministry. I never thought in a million years that I would be able to start a Pershaw Ministry. I started out making shawls one at a time, giving them away, and pretty soon it was too much. I couldn't make all these shawls because there were way too many people to deliver, to give them to. Um, I said, God, I don't know what to do. God says, start a ministry. I said, I can't do that. He said, kept saying, start a ministry, start a ministry. Well, I finally got it and decided that I would ask a few girls to help me out. And we started the ministry. And that was 14 years ago, five years in Michigan and nine years here in Maslin. We have made 190, no, 960, 36 shawls in the nine years that I have been here. Um, we, had, we have six girls making shawls. Kim Kish, Glenn and I, Sherry Steffen, Susan Wagner, Kelly Urban, La Pratt. And as we make these shawls, we pray over them. We don't necessarily know who they are for, but we pray over them anyways. Our ministry meets once a month, and we pray for them again. We, and we also pray for the people who are receiving them. We put the prayer shawls out here in front of the altar for the people to congregation to pray over them. Um, when we deliver the shawls, the people receiving them just can't get over how many people have been praying for them and how wonderful they feel and the comfort that they receive in these shawls. They're just amazed that sometimes people don't even know who they are. And here they are making shawls and praying for them. And the Per Shaw Ministry is the most rewarding thing I've ever done. And it definitely makes a difference. I thank God every day for this ministry. Your offering for the Pershaw Ministry and the Holy Trinity Lutheran Church really do make a difference. Thank you for supporting Holy Trinity Lutheran Church Ministries.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, Blessed and Holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal, and be fed. I invite you to take a moment now to prepare your bread for communion. This is the body of Christ given for you.
I invite you to take a moment now to prepare your juice or your wine for communion. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God of steadfast love, at this table, you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Christ Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity, amen. of kings is near. Let every hill and valley a level road appear. Then greet the King of glory foretold in sacred story. Hosanna to the Lord for he God's word. God's people see him coming, your own eternal king. Palm branches strew before him, spread garments, shout and sing. God's promise will not fail you. No more shall doubt assail you. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. Then fling the gates wide open to greet your promised king, your king yet every day. Its tribute to may bring. All lands will bow before him, their voices join your singing. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. His is no earthly king. It comes from heaven above. His rule is peace and freedom, and justice, truth, and love. So let your praise be sounding for kindness so abounding. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. Go in peace and share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.